All right, hello again, everyone. Oh, here we go. Hi, Michaela. There we go. <laughs> Okay, I know the Wi Fi can be tricky on campus sometimes. Oh, yeah. But all right. Thank you for oh, volume. Did I turn no sound? Um, can you hear me, Michaela? Yeah, I can hear you. Karen, anyone is anyone else having issues with the volume? Ian is saying he can't hear us. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you, uh, Michaela, for joining me, and thank you, everyone else, for tuning in. Um, this is our, I think, fourth episode of SAR Artists Live, um, and tonight we're going to be checking in with current Dubin fellow Michaela Patton, who is um, doing her residency on SAR's campus right now, even though we are closed to the public. So I'm excited to see what she's been working on and what it's been like uh, being on campus right now. Um, so uh, Michaela, if you could just maybe start by telling us a little bit about yourself and your practice. Okay. Um, again, my name is Michaela Patton. I'm Oglala Lakota. I'm from Pine Ridge, South Dakota. Um, I I call myself a printmaker and a paper maker, but I guess I'm a mixed media artist. Um, I've been printmaking for probably about five, six years, five to six years now, and I've been making paper for a couple years, so I'm still kind of exploring with paper still. Mm -hmm. um, but so far, I've been having a lot of fun with it, and um, I think being successful in um, certain projects that I've been working on. Um, and yeah. That's great. Um, and so you went to IAIA, right? Oh, yes. I am a, I'm a graduate, 2019 graduate of IAIA. So you've been uh, living in Santa Fe for a couple of years now? Yes. Awesome. Um, well, I think everyone would love to um, get a little tour of your studio and see what you're working on these days. OK. Let's see. Okay. Oh, and so, uh, just really quickly for the audience, please feel free to ask any questions or make any comments uh, throughout the video, and I'll make sure to pass those along to Michaela. Okay. Um, so this is like my main desk I've been working at lately. Um, I have my cart that has all my beadwork on it, um, my beads, my linoleum, my um, etching um, supplies my other random supplies I keep a lot of like sharp things near me because I need them <laughs> um so I've been working on a couple little things um on and off I've been working with beading on my handmade paper which has kind of been a little fun um so those are some pieces that I'm still working on and then I have some basically some molds for my paper making here with me and then on my other desk, I have I've also been kind of playing around with um, making books. So I've oh. been, I, um, I um, stitch my own book with my prints and my handmade paper. And I'm thinking about beading on the cover of those. So that's kind of some stuff that I've been doing. And then um, also, I'm usually used to working with the press, but here I don't have that. Um, luxury. <laughs> so I've been um, kind of playing around with how I would um, apply ink to paper without a press. And those are some pieces that I've kind of sampled with. <clears throat> and then these are uh, the handmade paper that I have. And then the round ones are the ones that I've made here in the studio. Oh, okay, wow. Yeah. So do you cut them out after you make the paper or do you make them round no i actually have a mold that is just round oh okay that makes so sense. i don't i don't have to <laughs> do any cutting um i actually tried to do that before it's not it's not easy um so yes yeah, so just some of the paper that i finished um these ones are dry and then i have to flatten them and then i'll start being able to um do my my images on them and then here in the middle of the studio, I have my kind of printing area. 
So I have it set up where I would basically put my ink here, mix it, and then I would apply with my brayers the ink. So this is the one I inked up before, and then these are the ones that I'm working on. <clears throat> and I'm just using like a, pla a plexi, and I basically just, I mean, like I was saying, I, I pretty much, um, as a mixed media artist, I use anything I could find. So I have like a cardboard and I just cut it and I glued it on. Cool. Someone can... from uh, the audience has a question. Uh, they want to know if you do one specific craft at a time or if you bounce back and forth between them. I kind of do between them. I kind of, it's hard to just do one thing at a time. So I kind of bounce back and forth that's why that's how my paper practice and printmaking practice and then my beadwork kind of mingled all together because mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't focus on one and then here's some pa paper I have laid out this is kind of like my paper so this is like the clean side and this is more mm -hmm. of the dirty side Okay. And some of the tools I use so when I whenever I transfer um an a plate to paper I would just burnish the back of it with something like this or something like this <clears throat> and that's that and then um I have my 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 paper so I basically collected a lot of paper pulp or a lot of the paper and I just shred it down to like say if I made a print and I didn't like it then I would just shred it up and I'd put it in here um so I was, I don't really have, so I have a blender and I broke it during my <laughs> process, but I was just going to kind of show like how I would normally do it. I hope you can see. Yeah, I think that's good. Ugh. I, it was working earlier, but it's being old now. Okay. So um, I have the two bins. This one has my shredded paper. And this one would have my, um, it, I would, I fill it up with water and then I would shred the, like I'd only do like a handful of paper and I'd put it in the blender with, and I'd fill it all the way up with water. Okay. And I would, I would blend it and then I, um, I pour it into the bin and then here's my mold I was talking about. It's already round. <clears throat> and I basically just, as when the paper is like all uh, pulped up in there. All I do is I, I dip the um, mold into the um, bin and I kind of shake it and mm -hmm. let all the water drip through. And um, once that, it's kind of like, you know, a lot of the water goes through, then I would take the top off and then I would flip it onto um, a sheet. Okay. And then whenever that dries a little, I, I basically just stick it onto the glass um, window and I would let the sun I would let it sun dry okay and then whenever it's dry it basically just falls off so I was using these windows you could kind of see like where the paper was sitting I think oh, okay. I, I would just stick it to the um glass and then it whenever it dries it just falls off and that's pretty much my whole studio Awesome. Um, can we maybe see some of your boxes? Okay. Uh, <laughs> so these are the boxes I made last year, but I it took me a few. It took me a while to put them together because I kept getting interrupted. Um, so these are I made the paper, um, and then I had a laser machine. I did all the de designs myself, and I had a machine <laughs> set. The, um, boxes out and then I assemble them myself so here are some small pieces um, so what was your inspiration for these boxes so um, I'm I'm Lakota and a lot of like Plains tribes we used to use parflesh um, whenever we traveled Mm -hmm. And they were parflesh suitcases, and what that is is it's basically a um, a raw hide, and it's it's beaten. It's be they basically like used like a like a, mm, I wouldn't say a mallet, but something to like beat the hide and stretch mm -hmm. it. And then when it dries, it dries really really hard, 
and then um, they basically cut out uh, the shapes, which are kind of like similar to these shapes, and they would assemble them together, making um, suitcases out of them for traveling, mm -hmm. and um, they would um, paint paint on the cover kind of similar to this as well, mm -hmm. and that that was kind of their their traveling um, cases. Do you have plans to create any other three-dimensional shapes out of your paper like this? I would like to. Um, these ones were a lot easier because, again, I, I used a laser machine that did all, the, like, the cutting and the etching for me. Um, I'm, I want to be able to do it by hand myself, but so far it's a lot slower than these were made. Right. Oh, they're very beautiful. Thanks. Ian agrees in the comments. <laughs> um, yeah. And then Alicia asked, uh, what are your plans for the paper that you've made so far? I was curious. About um, the, the circled ones? Mm -hmm. So um, I want to do, um, my plan is to basically make prints onto them, but they'd be all individual prints and to bead onto them. Okay. Oh, the whole thing, it'd be more of like towards the center of the circle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just keep smaller pieces because the paper making part takes a lot of time. Right. I'm sure the beadwork takes a lot of time too. It's oh, yeah. So time intensive. Could we um, see one that beaded piece up close, maybe? Um, sure. Sorry to <laughs> no, <it's laughs> have you running around your studio, but I just, your work is so detail oriented and intricate. I think the close ups really help. Yeah, yeah so this is the one I have. And then I'm basically um, doing like the lazy stitch style, which is kind mm -hmm. of a common style for beadwork, um, all native beadwork really, but. Um, specifically I'm you know me being Lakota I, I look at like a lot of Lakota beadwork so that's kind of like my inspiration so I, I do the lazy stitch style which is kind of just gathering a bunch of beads and then going back and forth wow. and I do um I do a basic like shape like I'll I'll draw in where I'm going to bead but as <laughs> far as like making a really detailed design like this I just eyeballed this Wow. Yeah, so it's just kind of, it's kind of cool too because you can kind of see the stitching in the back that creates the, goes along with the design. It's pretty fun. So neat. I've tried beating once in the back of my piece did not look as neat as that. Yeah, <laughs> it takes a while. It's definitely, um, it's tedious and it takes some time. There was one I did and I didn't like the way it turned out, so I had to take it apart. And then I ended up having to reinforce the back of it because it got some pieces got torn. So I'm going to go redo it, but then it'll be a lot stronger in the back. The cool thing about these is the paper is so thick that it, mm -hmm. it's like, well, you can't really tell how thick. But when you feel it, it's super thick. So it's easy to bead through without like tearing so much through it. Yeah. So can you um, maybe talk a little bit about what's been inspiring you these, these days? Is there like a common theme or like a common idea that is in all of the works that you've been creating while you're at SAR? Um, so the work that I've been doing at least the past couple of years or year um, is basically like more abstract symbolism work and um, that's I've just been really drawn to it. It's um, and I haven't had a chance to go to the collection yet, but, um, I've been looking at a lot of, like, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the, uh, art artist, um, Mary Sully. Okay. She, um, I don't think she, like, called herself an artist, but she did a lot of, like, um, abstracted work mm -hmm. in, like, the 20s and 30s, and it was just really, it's really amazing work. She called it, like, um... Oh, what did she call them? She called them um, personality pieces. Okay. And I thought that was really interesting. So that's kind of like what's been like influencing me while I'm here mm -hmm. is like thinking about that. So that's why the 
the circle pieces, I wanted them to all be different, or I'm expecting them to all be different and kind of have their own personality. Mm -hmm. But so like being inspired by the landscape here, okay. which I'm really, really enjoying. So I'm still kind of like working those images in my mind. Mm -hmm. And then kind of on the same note, um, someone asked, well, they said they want to hear more about the beading process, um, color choices, patterns, like how you decide on all of those elements for each piece. Um, it's kind of funny because I, I, I don't really like think too deep about the color choices. I kind of like, I'll show you. So like, I literally just have all my mixed beads uh -huh. and I'll go through and I'll pick through them and I'll just like, I'll pick up a couple different colors and if they look, I guess, pleasing to me, I'll just start <laughs> using them. Like the copper, I've been using copper a lot, but um, I don't know, I just, I guess I just, um, I've been really influenced again by like, like the land, um, so I've been like looking at like a lot of like um, grass, different colored grasses and even how like the different time of the day, like when the, you know, like especially here in Santa Fe, the color of the sky, mm -hmm. that's kind of like my influence for the piece that I just showed you is the copper and the blue. So it's that's like what I was going to say. It totally reminded me of the like cotton candy kind of sunsets here. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of what, been influencing my color choices um, mm -hmm. lately. and um, yeah um, Ian says I love the mountain pattern bead piece you completed in copper oh yeah yeah that one again um, I was spending a lot of time um, in the Alp area mm -hmm. And um, so I was look. I was basically seeing all like the red mountains and stuff a lot, and mm -hmm. that that one inspired that piece. Was like all the different beautiful like reds and, you know, like the way the sun hits the mount the the red, um, uh, earth or whatever, <laughs> and um, like the copper. It just looked really beautiful. So I kind of wanted to mimic that in that piece. Right. Um. So I heard that you have an exhibition coming up at a gallery here in town. Could you maybe tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so that's kind of, those are the pieces that I'm working on, on and off here too, is um, the the beaded pieces, the small beaded, those are, those are pretty small, they're only five by five. Um, <laughs> it's um, a show at the Hecho Amano. And okay. Yeah on Canyon Road. Oh yeah, yep. Awesome. Just right on the road from here. <laughs> so it's all it's going to be all um, beaded pieces on your handmade paper? Yes, yes. And when does that open? Um I think it's July 27th. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. We'll share it on our Facebook too so everyone can um uh, save the date for that. Let's see. Oh, we have another question. What size beads do you use? Oh, and then when is the show? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I use 13 cut beads and they're glass beads. Um, so they're, a lot of them are check beads. Um, yeah, they're 13 cut. They're pretty tiny. And what I mean by cut is literally one side of the bead is cut, so it, it gives it more of like a shimmery oh. or a shine. Uh -huh. That's why they're called cut beads. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, the show it opens on July 31st. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Frank. Yeah, thank you, Frank. Um, let's see, sorry, I was just trying to look up your artist talk too so that I can share that information here as well. Um, what's it like being, been, what has it like been, being on, 
Oh my gosh, my words are scrambled. How has it been being on campus uh, right now when it's so quiet and you kind of have the whole place to yourself? Um, it's been really, really nice. The one thing I'm I'm not used to is like when I'm sitting here quiet by myself working, mm -hmm. um, like bunnies try to or like rabbits trying to run come in the door because I keep the door open too, and okay. it's just like. <laughs> It's really peaceful and like, it's been really cool. I've That's been awesome. enjoying it. <laughs> um, do you have any other like exhibitions or fellowships or anything else coming up in the near future? Um, I have a couple projects. Uh, at the end of the year, I'll be going to Roswell. I'll be doing the um, rare residency. Um, and then I have a group exhibition in Pierre, South Dakota, and that will be ooh, December. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I'll be I'll be posting Just, it on my yeah. social media. Ian says collaboration. <laughs> oh yeah, in my collaboration. Do you do a lot of collaborations with other local artists? Um, no, not as much as I wish I should be. <laughs> Right. I'm sure that's hard right now, too, especially with social distancing. Oh, yeah. Oh, two campus suggestions. Someone said, well, Ian says apricots. Um, and then yeah. another suggestion to hang out in the president's garden. Have you ventured to that side of campus yet? Uh, a couple of times, just to walk, just for a little walks by myself. Awesome. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your jewelry? I'm wearing some of your earrings right now. Um, is that just something that you do kind of in your spare time or just for fun? Yeah, it is something I do in my spare time. Um, it was something that I, I just wanted to start learning to do originally. <laughs> and I eventually got into making jewelry and I don't know, I just love it. And I always try to like do something different with it. At least every yeah. year. Yeah. Um, someone wants to know how they can purchase beautiful earrings. <laughs> I do have a link on my um, Instagram page to my website, of my work that I have now. Okay. I, I probably won't have time to make any jewelry for a while. I know you seem so busy with so many different projects going on. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Awesome. Let's see, any last questions from the audience here? Um, just a plug while I'm waiting to see if uh, anyone has any last questions. Michaela will have her artist talk on August 6th at 5.30 p.m. And we'll be sure to share about it on our Facebook page. You can go to our website, um, but just to save the date and that will be online, so. Um, We'll have it on our YouTube page as well if you're not able to watch live and you can watch it um, in the future. But let's see. Well, I think that's it for questions. Um, and I want to be mindful of your time, Michaela, since it seems like you're busy in work mode there in the studio. Um, well, thank you so much for your time. And um, yeah. Oh, wait, one more question. Red or green chili? <laughs> what? <laughs> the last question, someone wants to know red or green chili? Oh, definitely green. <laughs> yeah, me too. Sometimes Christmas, but definitely a green chili fan. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, awesome. Well, it was so great chatting with you. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Thank you. See you.